Well, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's so good to be back with you again. This is the last time that we will be only on video. Uh, starting this next Sunday on May the 10th, we will be back in a limited way to worship in our sanctuary. I'm going to keep doing these videos like this for those who can't attend our worship services, uh, but uh, we are just so glad that we can start back and come together and worship this next week. If you're in the San Philip area, we invite you to join us uh, 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 just uh, right across the street from Stephen F. Austin State Park. Let's bow our heads now for a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you, we confess that we need your strength to see us through these uncertain times. We ask that you heal us and keep a shield of protection around us, and we thank you that you have done that for us thus far. We pray also for those who need financial assistance, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at the 23rd Psalm. Toward the end of his life, King David, whom God himself referred to as a man after my own heart, looked back on his life, and as he did, he could see that God had been with him and had his hand on his life all the way through. And as he saw this, this king who started out as a shepherd penned these words, and if you know them, feel free just to say them right along with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word at this time. You know, there are places in scripture that are so deep that just to recite them is in some way to experience them. And the 23rd Psalm is one of those. One scholar said of this Psalm, the Psalm itself is green pasture. The psalm itself is still water. The psalm itself restores my soul. And that's the way it affects me every time I read it. How about you? Have you ever noticed as you have gone through this psalm that there are no references to we or us or they, but only my and me and I and you. It's very, very personal. This is David's testimony, his personal experience of God. You know, I and other pastors have come to this passage in almost every funeral we've ever presided over. It's precious to all of us. It's a balm to our wounded souls. And what makes it so is that it covers all of life. With simple beauty, it speaks of green pastures and still waters, as well as dark valleys and enemies and adversities. 
But what comforts us and helps us is the confidence in this psalm. David really believes this about God. We realize as we linger over these words that what David writes is not poetic exaggeration or theoretical theology. He has experienced God in these ways. He has heard God's voice. He has followed God's lead. And he has felt God's care. That's the testimony of many of us who have walked with the Lord through the years. You see, underneath the beauty of his words, there are solid convictions that were formed in the crucible of crisis. The reasons I know these things to be so about a man who wrote a thousand years before the Lord appeared on the scene is because he left us clues right here in this psalm. Notice that in the first three verses, David refers to God in the third person. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He leads me. He restores my soul. And then in verses 4 and 5, David shifts, referring to him in the second person. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And then he closes by returning to the third person. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So why do you suppose David switches from talking about God with he to talking to God with you, and why does it happen in verses four, or in verse four? Why didn't he just go on to say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. I think the change from he to the more intimate you happens in verse four precisely because it's there. He speaks of the valley that he has walked. He has felt those shadows. And he describes the crisis points of his life in verse 4. And in those times, something deep happened between him and God. Now, you've noticed this too, haven't you? We're more prone to talk about God when we're in the green pastures and more prone to talk to God when we're in the dangerous valley. In the light, we're prone to wander off in pursuit of greener grass, aren't we? But in the dark, we hug his knee. We stay close to him. David changes from comments about God to communion with God because during this valley time, he stayed ever so close to the shepherd, never taking his eyes off of him. He had experienced God in a way that had ushered him toward intimacy with the almighty shepherd. Now, you and I are in a time today that's a time of crisis and uncertainty as we face this coronavirus 19, I don't think any of us have ever felt more like we were going through the valley of the shadow of death than right now. And my prayer today is that God would open his word to us in such a way that we will be able to move through this valley of the shadow of death with faith, not fear knowing that whatever comes our way, the Good Shepherd is with us. He is for us, and that good lies ahead. In the first four verses of Psalm 23, David takes 
the comforting picture of a shepherd with his sheep to describe the relationship God has with us and we with him. And everything makes sense to our understanding of a shepherd leading his flock to green grass and calm waters. But when we get to verse 4, it just doesn't seem to compute, does it? The valley of the shadow of death brings thoughts of a, a dangerous situation where a sheep's life is in jeopardy unless the, sir, the shepherd is very alert and very attentive. Well, let me tell you this. You can take comfort knowing that Jesus, the one who has identified himself as your good shepherd, has made it clear that he is both alert and attentive toward you. Listen how he describes himself as, as our good shepherd in the Gospel of John. He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to kill and to steal and to destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He was a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and isn't concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice and they will become one flock. I must bring them also. For this reason the Father loves me, because I laid down my life so that I may take it up again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down of my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment, I received from my Father. Now, answer for me this. Why would a sheep be guided into such a place as the valley of the shadow of death? Not because they strayed off in sin. That's not the point here. Because in Psalm 23, the shepherd is pictured as going with the sheep, not snatching the sheep back to the pasture that he left behind. It's clear that the reason the sheep is going through the valley is because the shepherd leads him there. The connection between verse 3 and verse 4 confirm this. The path through the valley is also one of the paths of righteousness in which God is leading us. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So why would the good shepherd, who would lay down his life for a sheep, lead a lamb into a valley filled with danger and death? Today, people are asking this in different ways. They're asking, why has God brought me to this? Why has God brought me to this place where I'm facing this quarantine and the danger that lies out beyond? Why has he brought me to this financial spot? 
Why has he brought me to this spot in my relationship? Why? And you know, there's really only one answer. To get to a better place. Philip Keller is an Australian uh, shepherd whose wonderful little book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, includes this observation about valleys. The shepherd knows from past experience that predators like coyotes, bears, wolves, or cougars can take cover in these broken cliffs and from their vantage point prey on his flock. He knows these valleys can be subject to sudden storms and flash floods that send walls of water rampaging down the slopes. There could be rock slides, mud, or a dozen other natural disasters that would destroy or injure his sheep. But in spite of such hazards, he also knows that this is still the best way to take his flock to the high country. He spares himself no pains or trouble or time to keep an eye out for any danger that might develop. Now here's the truth of the matter. When you're walking through some unfamiliar, dangerous valley and the shadows grow long, when the pandemic seems so threatening, when you have cancer and have to decide whether it will be chemotherapy or some other way, when you're trying to decide as a matter of godly stewardship whether to take your money out of the market or let it ride, when your job has evaporated or is shaky and times are looking scary, when your finances are tight and you're taking on yet another job to make ends meet, Remember this, your shepherd has appointed even this hard time as one of his paths to righteousness. He is leading you through this valley for reasons that probably aren't very apparent, but rest assured, he's taking you to the high country where the sun is warm and the grass is lush. Every valley is a pathway to something better. Psalm 84, 11 says it this way, No good does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. The Apostle Paul puts it another way in Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. You see, it's not that the valley is good, but the shepherd is good, and he knows the way. If you're in the valley today, I encourage you, trust him. He's taking you somewhere great. David tells us how to be fearless in adversity in this psalm. He tells us that even in the valley of the shadow of death, he didn't dread the distress that he would face or cringe in the face of Christus. How do you fight fear when you don't know what's going to happen next? and your imagination is working overtime? Well, let me show you how David did it. David tells us his confidence came from three sources, and these three sources can be yours as well if they're not already. They are God's presence, God's power, and God's leading. In verse 4, David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you're with me, God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. First, he speaks of God's nearness and his presence. When you step into your valley 
and it's so dark you can't even see the path ahead. And you know there's the possibility that there are predators and enemies and other dangers laying in wait for you. Your shepherd has something he wants you to hear. And it's these words right here. I will be with you. I'm going to repeat. He's telling you today, I will be with you. As you're going through this valley, I will be with you. Don't turn to drugs or resort to drink or find some other substitute that you think is going to, going to help you get through this valley. You have what you need. All you need is your shepherd. Hebrews 13, 5, and 6 says it like this. He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there is no valley, no matter how dark, that you will ever go through alone. He will not leave you. A shepherd's rod was a two-foot club made of oak with a rounded head that was whittled from the knot of a tree and had sharp bits of metal pounded onto it. And this club was used to defend the flock against attacks, and it represents the shepherd's power, the power that he wields against enemies the sheep could never handle alone. David said that he had no fear in adversity because of the comfort of God's power, protecting him from that which would ruin him. And you see, brothers and sisters, you need not fear. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Remember that in this time. He stayed in God's presence. He had faith in God's power in that dark valley. And lastly, he experienced God's leading. He said, your staff comforts me. And you know what? God's leading is a comforting leading. He was referring to the shepherd's crook with its hook on the end. The shepherd would use it to guide the sheep to keep them from straying away. Just a gentle tap on the staff on a, a lamb's side would move them back in the fold, and the crook could gather up a sheep from a place where it might have fallen. David felt comforted that his shepherd was guarding his steps, making sure that it made it, he made it through the darkness in safety. David was supremely confident not only about his present circumstances, but of grace in the future that would see him all the way home. He believed that the valley times were appointed for his good. He learned things about God there that could never be learned in any other way. Those times in the deep ravines are the times that he was able to see God's reality and presence more than any other time. He stayed close. He trusted in God's protection and guidance all the way, all because he could say, the Lord is my shepherd. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when you find yourself weak and in the dark and uncertain of the future, I want to encourage you, look up. Fix your eyes on Jesus, your good shepherd. Stick close to him. Trust that he knows the way through this valley that you're going through right now, and he's going to see you on to the higher ground. Something better lies ahead if you'll just stick with the shepherd. 
believe that he has good reasons for taking this route, even though it's hard or unfamiliar. And hold on to the truth that there's something better waiting on the other side of this valley. Now, it could be that you've been listening to this and you're one of those who have no peace right now because Jesus is not your shepherd and you're not a part of his flock. You've been trying to handle this thing called life on your own and you weren't designed to any more than a sheep was designed to head out and live a lonely life all on its own without a good shepherd. Well, if you realize now that you want to be a part of his flock and that you want his peace, you want him to be your shepherd, the good shepherd that you can lie on. I want to let you know some good news. He wants you to be a part of his flock. And if you're tired of trying to handle it all by yourself, just pray this with me right now. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I am tired of trying to fight all this stuff and handle all this stuff all by myself. I want to be a part of your flock. I want to know your presence, your comfort, your guidance, the assurance that everything's going to be okay in my life. And I realize now that you have made a way for me to have it. You died on the cross for me so that I could be a part of your flock. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for having wandered away and looked other directions instead of looking to you. And I want to come and be a part of your flock now. I repent and I want to come home. I want to come through the gate that is you, the one who died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead to offer me eternal life. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died to make it possible for me to be a part of your flock and for you to be my good shepherd. Come into my life, forgive me of my sins, and help me to live my life as a part of your flock from now on. Thank you, Lord, for receiving me. Amen. Lord, I pray for each one that just prayed that prayer, that you would visit them even now with your peace your presence, and your comfort in Jesus' name. Amen.